you can get jump scared by anything. Yeah. Like I said before, yeah. I mean, a good, a well-timed fart can scare <laughs> a person. There was this guy and this girl, and they wanted to make a podcast. And they didn't know what to call it, but they sure talked a lot. So they said, let's call it Flappity Flap. Flappity Flap Podcast. Yeah. So I am having in my head, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? I'm out of tune. I can't. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Something, something else. And it's, um, did you ever see, I guess it's Disney, so I had to look it up, um, of the Three Little Pigs. Oh. Classic story. And it just brought me back to when I was a kid and, um, we had a record, an actual record of it. Hmm. And, um, we would play it and it was like, there is something about records that is very filling of like the room, you know, um. And just like it was, I don't exciting. know. I haven't heard, I haven't listened to a record in yeah forever well, since I was very young. It was always a big deal to get it working, to get a record that wasn't scratched. And I, my, I'm pretty loud, huh? Still, or are you? I think I was pretty loud. Maybe our things got turned up. I well, um, I turned it up. Oh, sorry. So go I ahead. mean, but mine still sounds pretty loud. Anyway, um, and to get the record player out, get it working. And get a record out because we didn't have that many records or we didn't listen to them that much. So like, but it was like a production, you know, but then when it got playing, it was, there was something just, um, exciting about it. And I think because they were stories, there was something about listening to a recording that you weren't watching that was really cool, which I think is why I've always like, what do you mean? Like not watching it on a show or a movie, Yeah, you know, for it, because especially as kids like that was that was what you did you know mm -hmm. you watched stuff or maybe you listened to music on the radio but you didn't really listen to like stories you know fictional or whatever dramas or whatever auditorily without i don't know visual like, yeah so why is that cool to I you i don't know but i i always remember like driving back from family reunions with my mom in the car late night driving home and like We'd occasionally find a radio show, um, like sometimes it was like the Twilight Zone, but um, one time, we, you know, we just happened on this like radio mystery show. And there's just something about maybe because you can paint a picture in your mind. Yeah, that's probably why you like reading. And also it's just kind <laughs> yeah. of easier to focus on one um yeah. one thing happening, I think. Yeah, but there was something also like I had the album cover you know, and I would look at it and I would like look at the back of it and there might be like some illustrations or whatever from the Disney because I think it was a, you know, there was a cartoon of it. A drawing. But it, yeah. Oh, but, but also. No, a, an actual uh, like. Oh, okay. Also a thing. cartoon. Yeah. Okay. They called it silly stories or something. I'll, I'll talk about. Yeah. And um, so I could sort of fill in the rest. So it was almost like watching a thing, but the, I don't know. I think there's just something about. <laughs> I don't know. Vinyl that. um. When was the last time you listened to a vinyl record? Well, well, is that redundant? Are they all vinyl? I have no idea. I am not. I don't know. And I know some people are really purists about that, and I'm not one of them. But I do. I just remember. And maybe it was just the idea that, like, my dad would be involved. You know, because we had a bit of a dysfunctional family. You know, there, yeah, I won't go into it, it too much. It was like a normalcy. Yeah. And, it, and the fact that, like, everyone kind of got involved. Mm -hmm. Um. And like, you know, my dad would probably get out the record player and my mom would be there and like me and my sister or it, I don't like even remember if my sister team. was alive yet. You were a unit. When we, the... we were doing a thing together yeah. and we were all kind of enjoying it equal. Well, I'm sure I was enjoying it more because it's <laughs> a kid's thing, you know, mm -hmm. but um, and I just always remembered them singing that song. But I'm sure parents get enjoyment out yeah. of seeing their kids really enjoy a thing. And there's something about something really wholesome about not watching it on TV and kind of getting that, like, everyone's just staring at the boob tube, you know, not to date myself, but there was something huh. more interactive about listening and, you know. That I don't really understand, but mm -hmm. 
I mean, I can appreciate it because when we listened to Cabin Pressure together, mm -hmm. that was a really nice experience. It's so fun. It's, I yeah. And if if you guys haven't heard Cabin Pressure, oh my gosh, it's pretty so good. damn funny. The, so good. The um, the Detective Thursday from that show Endeavor. Endeavor. Mm -hmm. It's a prequel to Morse or yeah. Inspector Morse. Uh, he Roger he's Allen in it. He's very funny. He's very funny. He's very funny. Yeah. And what do they call him? Benadryl Cumberbun, Bened Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> oh yeah, how did how could I forget could that forget? he's in it? Yeah, he's like the main young up and coming. But you don't you watch know, as much stuff with him pilot. as I do because I'm all about Sherlock and some of the other stuff. Whereas you got into Endeavor with me, so you really like Roger. And also, I think seeing Roger Allen play such a serious character and then play such like a, a snarky a like snarky bitch. <laughs> he's so funny, but he's oh, super yeah. like streetwise too, and just like always able to pull one over on everybody. And mm -hmm. and then um, cabin I think, pressure. I think is we've, the show. I think we've talked about it before, but um, whatever. And it's the aunt. I forget what her name is from. Um, Doc Martin. And I think she was only in it for a series or two, but she like owns the quote unquote airline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like one plane. And her son is also yeah. there sometimes. He's just... an idiot. But he's actually yeah. the one who writes the show. The real, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's really good. And I think sometimes they have other famous people guest, but it's just, it's a radio show. And the English, I think are all about that still like preserving that old, I, I think like the archers might still be going and that's like a drama has been going radio drama. I think it's been going forever. I've never listened to it. I don't think it's really my cup of tea, but I like the comedy stuff and I like like the mystery or thrillers, such a great medium. And I think that's partly what got me thinking about doing a podcast because yeah. you have these fictional co podcasts, fictional podcasts, and there's just like listening. What the fuck is my problem? You're just listening to, <laughs> I get to excited podcasts. And I can't. Yeah. Uh, Wolf three five nine. I think you just need to eight, slow five. down a little bit. <laughs> but I get let your, excited. Let your uh, yeah. mouth catch up. Yeah. Or yeah. Your, yeah. Your brain. I catch think so. Up. Yeah. Uh huh. But um, there is something about just sitting and listening and like filling in the gaps, the visual gaps with your brain, and kind of, it's so much fun. I personally like it because you can lay down with your eyes closed mm. and just listen to it. You don't have this like. Because with television, yeah. you can try to just listen to it, but there are so many moments where you're like... What just happened? You just had to see yeah. what was happening. Bobby's but, ass assless chaps would not be the same with no visual. Yeah, from King of the Hill. <laughs> you have to explain this. <laughs> I know, from King of the Hill. I just like to throw it out Bobby there. Bobby jumps out of a dressing room <laughs> and he's like, ha! Or like, ha cha! Uh -huh. And Hank is like... Oh. He, Hank turns around and sees in this triple view mirror... <laughs> bobby's ass three times and he's like bah 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 uh -huh. and isn't bobby like hello there <laughs> to oh, his yeah. own ass oh hello there uh -huh. i'm sure we've talked about it before but if you haven't watched it fucking watch it yeah it it's definitely so good it definitely doesn't that's um, the highlight for me doesn't hello. read without the visual yeah but with radio shows it's kind of nice and you can you know you can work on a thing while you're yeah. doing it yeah while that you're is, listening that is nice although i think like with wolf 359 i can't um what is that that's a science fiction um uh podcast i mean you can just google it and it's they're on a space station and um it's kind of a i think a lot of the good ones are small cast because you can't you have to be able to distinguish um the voices but one of the actors at least plays two different voices but they're very different like one's like the russian doctor and one's like the main communications officer um but they do cool stuff. And they have quite a few episodes. I'm not even halfway through. But I can't listen to it if I'm really like concentrating on something. Mm. Like if but I'm doing depends, something mindless. Because if I because I can pretty much listen to anything mm -hmm. while I'm drawing. But if I'm like doing emails yeah. or doing work that involves words, I cannot yeah. listen to a thing. No, so that's if you're the doing thing. something like creative that it doesn't involve words, it's a lot easier. Yeah. If, yeah, if I'm having to draft original or, like, read a report and actually understand it, like, I'm not just checking for typos or, like, gra grammatical stuff. Like, if I'm having to comprehend it, I can't listen to it because I can't comprehend the wordy stuff. But um, but it's, it's really good. But what I like is that they also do uh, – so I like the sound effects they use. And sometimes I think it's the main actor. In Wolf 359. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sometimes I think it's the 
main actor doing like the noise of like air venting or like um maybe sometimes doors opening so with their mouth he will actually and i think they um tweak it a bit or like engineer really? it that's a bit. weird but it's it's at first i was like come on and then i was like I actually kind of like that that's so because it'll be like Shh. but it's and you might not like it you might be like annoyed but I would want I them to do like cool. proper Foley work because otherwise you'd, I feel like it would pull you out of it. Like, but I think that. Shasha or pew, pew, pew. But it's, it's very <laughs> rare. At, most of the stuff is, I think, Foley work, like proper kind of engineering sounds and spaceship, mm. proper spaceships, whatever they do yeah, to make. Yeah. They're really well Mechanical done. Mechanical sounding sounds, I not feel organic like, made with a human mouth yeah, sounds. But I feel like that particular sound, for whatever reason, they chose deliberately to use him or use a, a human i don't know why but it's mm. like it's almost like an easter egg or something but everything else sounds very professionally done that's so weird it's i'll have to find a spot and play it's a few times and i'm like what the fuck? that would like, feel like a mistake to me like, are they oh, trying they to make it feel like the ship's alive or the station is alive or like what or is it just to like make you go huh hmm. you know i don't know uh it, it's a subjective like but most of the other stuff i mean they have explosions you know mm -hmm. they have explosions that happen and, and they sound going, pew, 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 pew. yeah <laughs> it's really well done so i i kind of just like the little things or a lot of times when they're typing on the keyboards it'll be the same like sequence of chuk, 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 you know but i let that go or it's like a familiar like the sound of the star trek doors you know opening and closing like you just kind of like oh yeah like even though that's the same sound mm -hmm. because they do it so well in so many other ways i i forgive it or i kind of have this like affection for it like oh yeah that's i don't know hmm. it's just familiar it becomes maybe very it kind of wakes you up a little bit too maybe. like if you're doing something else and you hear this you, you know go hey i know otherwise that. i know that's that guy's voice lazy. <laughs> i don't know i don't know how dare you don't don't you don't what? <laughs> anyway how did we get started feels on a little bit like that mm -hmm. thing uh from from oni place that when thing. he was talking about hulk they're like uh, <laughs> agreeable grunt yeah there's so there's uh -huh. an avengers game where the you're playing as the hulk and you're walking through this spaceship or something or mm -hmm. a space station i don't know probably not probably just a ship i don't i don't know whatever uh -huh. he's walking through and and this other characters like how you doing hulk and it just is a robot voice that says agreeable grunt it's basically like a <laughs> cue for the actor to tell them what kind of noise to make or who are the voice actor right so it'd be in the script it's, in brackets it's a cue for <laughs> the sound effect whatever it be i yeah. think that's how they probably do it as they're storyboarding it out mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. yeah and they just missed they that one missed somehow it. yeah there was one more layer of proofing that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I think they shipped the game that way. Mm. So they. I'm sure there's been worse. I'm sure it's not the first oh, yeah, or the last, course. but it of is kind of like. Oh. It's just funny because they have testers, especially mm -hmm. big companies like that. They have plenty of people testing them. You'd think somebody would have come across that part and gone, hey, <laughs> probably fix that. Uh -huh. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to like recall it? So I feel like then that the developers or whoever probably got a credit for that. Um, you guys are supposed to be a professional, whoever they might, might have contracted to proof or catch all that shit. Oh, yeah, they do contract you know, out we, work. We need, we need a substantial credit for that because that's gone out to thousands or hundreds of thousands or however many. But at the same time, it's like you guys, I'm sure, had the testers. What the hell are your testers doing? Mm -hmm that they're not catching these obvious things because they have game testers mm -hmm. play spots over and over and yeah. over again. Like they just play through the game. Then when they find a, a glitchy spot, they have to like repeat it. Mm. I think they have to play it until they can until repeat it no to figure out what the issues are. Mm. I don't really know much about it, but yeah. Well, just think about all the movies that went out. It's and very you involved, see, you know, a continuity thing or, and it's like, Man, how many people watched this? How did you and miss yet, this fucking... <laughs> it might have taken me multiple viewings to see it, and then now I can't unsee it. You know, I see it every time I watch it. Yeah. You know, with some... There's some favorites. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I really like that audio kind of experience. Audio 
stories, um, especially like kind of live sounding or live-ish record, you know, not live, but in a studio, mm. um, kind of like cabin pressure, but like the old kind of thriller type mystery shows. I, I love oh, that yeah. shit. What was that one with, um, <clears throat> what, <clears throat> what the heck is that guy's name? What the heck is that guy's name? Um, he was basically like an actor in the show, but he was like a sleuth. Oh, and there yeah, would be Bill Nye. Yeah, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. And I don't remember what the name of that show was. Charles that, Paris. Charles Paris. That was a good one. With two R's. Too. Yeah. And he would good. just investigate. So he was an actor, mm -hmm. and there would be a an death. An aging actor, yeah. And, and there would be a death on the on the stage or, mm -hmm. you know, during the play. <laughs> And he would go Sorry. investigate it. Mm -hmm. And he was like an alcoholic or something. Yeah, he always wanted to have a fry up and and a bourbon or some kind of bad thing for him. And What's a fry with up? His, oh, you know, like an English breakfast, like, uh, you know, bacon. Oops. Whoops. Um, I don't know. Eggs. All hmm. the bad stuff. Hmm. Black pudding. Beans. Toast. All the bad stuff. Fried egg. Hmm. But he's like, you know, old and having probably stomach issues. I don't remember. Definitely anyway. heart issues. <laughs> yeah. But um, he ha he has such a great voice. Mm hmm Yeah. I yeah, that, that. that was a good one. Yeah. I just like being able to not have to have my eyes open. Yeah. If I want. Yeah. Or not be looking at it. Mm hmm I feel like it's much more interactive, too. Just, I feel like you and I will, like, look at each other and kind of laugh or smirk, and then we kind of... You kind of, everything's not being done for you, you know, here, we're feeding you the audio as well as the visual. You don't, you're just very passively like, mm -hmm. you know, blobbing on your couch watching this. And yeah, that's a good point. I think I that's like... why reading is good and audio, the audio is cool, but you, you kind of create a picture without even wanting to. Well, and I'm one that kind of, I don't like reading, mm -hmm. but I do enjoy the audio book things mm -hmm. whatever you would call them mm -hmm. what would you call them audio shows radio shows yeah yeah i think that'd be like a radio show hmm. or like the fictional podcasts so i like that uh anyway yeah three little pigs that's on my list so um we didn't do any kind of intro this is flappity flap by the way <laughs> I, I think they can tell by the title. I know. I just, I just wanted to poke fun at our inconsistency. So our topic of today is, um, what would you say, like inappropriate or uh, adult themed moments in children's shows? Mm -hmm. Did I capture it? Yes. Like, perfectly. Um, yeah, I think so. You want me to start? You want to start? Go ahead. All right. So I picked an easy one, kind of, because it was one of the things that I remembered we we watched with my family it was again it was one of those things that like would you leave me alone um one of those things that we watched as a family so it was kind of a rare we'd go into my parents bedroom in the morning we katie and i would sit on the floor um i don't know if she was alive but you know she's seven years younger than me so we'd go and like lay on the carpet and like put her head in her if she was alive and, yet yeah that's what i meant not that not like she not died like after she, yeah <laughs> so uh anyway it was uh peewee's playhouse um and we did of course well we didn't know at the time that it was a fair amount of adult humor or innuendo or a little you know winky wink mm -hmm. so my parents enjoyed it on that level and you know the fact that i think that it wasn't a cartoon and it wasn't like just a bunch of dumb kids um actors you know being yeah let's hold hands and uh -huh. la 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 right. la Right. Just Tell ba shit. basically like torture for adults. Right. <laughs> like literally torture. Like the police use Barney songs to get um, uh, hostage situations under control. Oh my gosh. To like drive people crazy to get them out. I think, wow. they have, I think the police have blasted Barney at houses to get hostage situations. That's cool and unusual. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> That, like, Great make, marketing really for makes you feel for the yeah. parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, parents everywhere. But you know what's worse? I think is the Teletubbies. Like my aunt was like, "It's really awful." Like even the kids when they were young would get bored by it. Or like they would Yo Gabba way. Gabba 
or I, I've never watched that, but I watched all, one Teletubby all scene the strange... and it was so fucking weird and stupid and yeah. Anyway, so Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, I feel like you know Miss Yvonne, however you say it, Miss Yvonne and Cowboy Curtis, Lawrence Fishburne, I, Fishburne, Fishburne. Shut up! I think it's spelled. I boring. never really watched it. So, so he's know. Morpheus. <laughs> uh, that's what he's best known for in my mind, apart from Cowboy Curtis. Um, and so I felt like there was always not necessarily, yeah, oh, between them, but just individually too, they were like the ones who you'd, you would have innuendo. So one of the ones I looked up was uh, Miss Yvonne comes over and Pee Wee's in his pajamas. And I, f- I swear he's got like these platform slippers on. And he's like, mm. um, I think they're getting ready for a slumber party or pajama party at his house. And he's like, why are you in your pajamas? And she's like, oh, I brought them. I'm going to change into them later. And he's like, um, so first uh, they'd always have a word. And I think he would, um, maybe the, the robot would print it out and he'd read it. And so anytime anyone said the word of the day, whatever, and they might have called it something else, everyone would yell and scream and celebrate. And they'd be like, ah, oh. yeah. so... <laughs> So Miss Yvonne says, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to change in my pajamas. And Pee Wee's like, ha ha, can I watch? And <laughs> whoa, but the whoa moment, there, the moment is sort of um, overridden by the celebration because watch is the word. So the fish and all the other guys like, whoa, ha, ha, and there's like clang, 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 because he said the word. Oh so it just sort of glosses over. Goodness. And then she's like, oh, Pee Wee. But it's like, is it because he said, can I watch or because he said the word of the day? And it's just like, oh, you fucking pervert. <laughs> you fucking sneaky little <laughs> gross writers. But Don't it's you know very kids clear watch this what, shit? He's ta- what the, he's saying, can I watch you change? Like there's nothing else going on. And it's like, yeah, how did you get away with that? In a way, it was a better time because you could <laughs> could get away with some stuff and like give something to the parents and the kids. But in a yeah. way, it was like, Ugh. So the parents aren't just like going mentally numb Not, yeah exactly but then again i mean you, you don't really need perverted stuff you can yeah. have just funny good writing yeah. in shows yeah so that's my um clip you go ahead why don't you do your next one no nope. and then i'll do one no that doesn't make sense do just do your next one and i'll do one all right um so cowboy curtis is sitting in a chair looking at his boots and they're looking a bit uh rough you know looking a bit worn in and he's wishing for a new pair of boots and so jombie shows up jombie's the genie like he's just like a head in a box kind of thing floating head um and peewee says i'm not gonna try to do the voice he says jombie cowboy curtis wants a new pair of boots and he's like can i give my wish to cowboy curtis and he's like okay but just remember you only get one wish a day He's like, I like to do things for other people or it makes me feel good or something, which I kind of wondered if that was a thing. Anyway, so Cowboy Curtis says, oh, I want a new pair of boots. I don't know. I'm telling it bad. Anyway, Jombie says, oh, what size? And he says, size 12, double E. And Jombie says, wow, big feet. Oh, no, Pee Wee says, wow, big feet. And Cowboy Curtis says, well, you know what they say about big feet. Pee Wee's like, no, what? And he's like, big feet, big boots. <laughs> And Jombie does this look like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and Pee Wee's like confused and then kind of does this look like, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good, good stuff. They really love to sneak that stuff in. Yeah. Not super sneaky, but if you're a dumb kid, it just goes right over your head. You're waking up your computes. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready for the one I looked up? I'm, I'll brace myself. Okay. So the ones, the only ones I wrote about or put down were mm-hmm. ones that I remember watching. Oh. So. And I just don't remember a lot of stuff like you do. So I don't think I remembered most of. Well, and I don't know if you watched as many dumb cartoons and stuff. I, yeah, maybe not. I watched a lot of cartoons. Okay. So one is um, Cow and Chicken. There was a an episode called Buffalo Gals, and uh, it had a female biker gang in it. Okay. And they broke into Cow and Chicken's house and started eating their carpet. Oh, what? So basically, <laughs> you know, like it's carpet muncher uh-huh. is a derogatory term for a lesbian. Uh-huh. And on top of that, I actually found out while 
doing a little bit of research that the name of the episode, Buffalo Gals, that was a song performed by blackface performers in 1844. Oh my. And I guess one of the earlier versions of the song, uh, Buffalo Gals, was called Lovely Fan. What? Lovely Fan, what which mean? means lovely fanny. Like a pee? Pip, like pussy? nice ass? Oh. Fan, no, like Amer- the American oh, version, okay. I think. Because for anyone who doesn't know fanny in like English, I just wondered if it was an old timey meaning, you know. I don't think so. I think it, it means... means I, the, I think it means nice ass, girl but I, I'm not really sure. In England. Okay. But lovely fan. Lovely fan, which is <laughs> weird. A mock African American dialect, oh meaning lovely fanny. What the hell? Yeah, per- performed also by blackface people. Okay, so the blackface Buffalo group. Gals was the group or a song? It was a song. Okay. Performed by I forgot what they called them. Weird. Um, it was some. It was some black-faced group. And this is Cow and Chicken? Yeah, Cow and Chicken. Which I don't think I've ever watched. It, I mean, I remember the cartoon being funny because of Red Guy, really. Red Guy is funny, like the devil guy. It's really weird. Oh, but they don't call him the devil? No, they, they I think they guy. call him Red Guy. That's weird. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I mean, that's just... Come on, guys. That's a lot of layers of inappropriateness. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it. I mean, I don't with the blackface thing. That's a bit... I don't know. Yeah, like, what was your goal? What was your goal there? (laughs) You fucking... Just to see how far people would dig to to find stuff. Yeah, I I don't know. Weird. Like, are you promoting Uh that kind of weirdness? Well, when you said buffalo gals, I thought, that sounds like a thing. Well, it's like buffalo... I think... I think it comes from Buffalo, New York. Okay. So it's. I like just felt like it was going to be like dancing. a sex thing or a bestiality thing or something, but I so I'm kind of relieved about that. Y- yeah, but at the same time, it's like it's not better. Still in a it's, bad direction. <laughs> it's not better what you're left with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do another one? So um, sure. I feel like I feel like we need to go back and watch all these because I went back and watched some of them that I didn't know, um, or couldn't remember. But yeah. So so here's another one. The um, So I'm looking away from you so I don't look at your screen. It's okay. not because okay. I'm disconnecting from you. The The Grim Adventures of Billy Billy and Mandy. Okay. Which are is a cartoon that I loved when I was younger. And how young do you think you were? Cuz I know as an adult you like some of this stuff. I think even as an adult I I enjoy it. It's mm-hmm. like there was a character called Hostel Gato who was voiced by the do you remember the Drew Carey show? Yes. The dark haired guy? Yes. He was like the dumbest guy, was it or was Ryan Styles' character dumber? I think they were both dumb. The two dumb dumbs, yeah. I think they were both dumb. <laughs> but it's voiced by him. Okay. And it's I just, do like him. He's just so great. <laughs> it's just such funny, like you know, the name's Haas. <laughs> and he like sniffs his armpit and he's like, Haas <laughs> Delgado or something. Oh. It's just so just very childish uh-huh. writing and like when um when Billy's dad is trying to figure out where to put the shed in his backyard and he's like just yodeling and Grimm's like, What are you doing? He's like <laughs> checking the acoustics. Yeah, no, 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 no. And then he just like he just throws all of the shed materials on Grimm's back mm. and crushes him. It's just oh. very funny. But Grimm is the Grim Reaper, right? He's like yeah. dead or whatever already. He is dead, but I think he still, still feels hurts pain himself. for some reason. <laughs> Poor guy. And remember when he's picking his nose? Exactly. I think that's why I don't want to watch that show because it was so nasty. <laughs> that's the same episode where he's. You know, I can the watch acoustics. the poop stuff and everything, but a nose picking is like, and it was so extreme. I was like, I'm done. I, they're they're like talking in the foreground, and he's like, "Don't mind me. I'm just gonna be here picking my nose." Is it the dad or the? And he pulls his oh. entire brain out of his nose, and then like looks around, and then puts it in his mouth. <laughs> I'm trying to master myself. But anyway, but anyway. So there, there was a, a moment where Billy had morphed into this Cthulhu type character. And if you don't know Cthulhu, it's like a squid monster type thing. And there were he was working in like a telemarketing office and they they all had their cubicles where they were calling people and their calls would turn people into 
um, you know, monsters, squid monsters mm-hmm. and stuff. So uh, Mandy and the Grim Reaper, or Grim, walk into Billy's cubicle. And Mandy says, what did she say? Uh, Your nose looks like some sort of cuttlefish. And Billy responds by saying, chicks dig cuttlefish. And then Mandy says, and your mouth looks like a big disgusting sucker. And Billy says, chicks dig. And then Grim interjects <laughs> saying, don't go there, man. <laughs> and I, when I was younger, I could not. I knew what they were talking oh, about. And I how could, old do you think you were? I was old enough. I was probably like 15-ish. I, I thought remember. you were going to say five. So no. like five. But huh. I just... I, I don't remember how old so I was. So did that crack you up or were you appalled or were you like, oh, oh. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. How'd they get away with that? I was like, what the, what, what on earth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's I know like, this is the, a disgusting are show. Are the censors just old and out of touch and stupid or do they just want that sort of stuff in there? Because I have no idea. It I think create it create a buzz because people will talk about it. It and could go, be that the presidents or president or like CEOs or whatever of these networks are mm-hmm. all kind of older, kind of out of touch, mm-hmm. and they run these things by, and it's like they just get missed because it's weird. Well, they can't know. watch every. I mean, do you really think they watch every episode and screen it? I I'm sure there not. have to be some. People. I'm sure not. I'm sure they're trying to sneak stuff in. I'm sure there is a screening process that. Yeah, but the people who want that, the people who are really screening it closely and watching it closely are probably the people who want to sneak that stuff in. Whereas the people like the censors who, I mean, do you really think they watch all this stuff? I, I'm i sure their attention wanders. They're like, I, I'm an adult, man. I don't want to be watching this shit. Or they're drinking their bourbon or something. I don't even know. Yeah, but if you're getting paid to do it. And also yeah, Billy, and how Mandy, often? <laughs> Billy and Mandy, I think, stands up. It holds up to, like, adult viewers. I think you can watch it and enjoy it as an adult. I just feel like people who are screening for that kind of stuff probably for the most part are not people who are actually into watching watching um, cartoons, even if they're kind of more adult. Yeah, maybe. I, don't I mean, know. and how many people get paid to do a job and still do it not 100%? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. Most people don't. Uh, do you want to do the next oh, one? Oh, sure. Um... <laughs> so i have some other ones but i really want to I, I had quite a few from peewee but i think i would just um wear it out so oh okay so the three little pigs one uh it's disney's three little pigs and it was called like silly stories or something and um so the first little pig builds his house out of straw and the big bad wolf comes and blows it down mm-hmm. and so the first little pig runs along to his brother's house and his brother's made a house full of sticks Mm-hmm. Or made a house of sticks. And the big bad wolf comes and he blows it down. She's got to set the stage here. So they run along with their fat little pig I butts. I think I remember too, this. Just for some ahead. people who don't know the main story. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying I think I remember what the bad part is. So go ahead. But oh. go ahead. Oh, okay. That's funny. So they go to the third brother. Now, to me, this was a lesson because I watched it. It's not very long. Um, and he is like a workaholic. So he makes his house full of bricks and he won't take a break. And the other two brothers are making fun of him. But his house stands up. The wolf can't blow it down because it's made of bricks. Mm-hmm. And they're like laughing and dancing. And on the wall yep. is a portrait of father. <laughs> yep. And it's just sausage links. Yep. And, you know, it's so it's not like a, a sexual thing, but it's just like, oh, very damn. wrong. They have. So, you know what you're going to end up as or <laughs> they have their father as sausages yeah. on the wall. Uh-huh. I mean, that's kind of nightmarish. It's it is. one thing to have an yeah. urn. Uh-huh. And it's another thing to have sausages. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, fucking amazing. Pretty fucked up. Uh-huh. And they're just the one pig's playing the piano and they're the other two are dancing and just in <laughs> under the portrait of father. Well, and I think the further back you go in cartoons, the more the more disturbing mm-hmm. stuff you're gonna find. Like, you know, like yeah. blackface characters and Yeah. Or just, just kind of more like horrendous like raunchy. I think, I think in one version of the three little pigs, the the wolf comes down the chimney and they start a fire. And then he falls into the fire or into the pot and they cook him. In this wow. one, they he just burns his ass or something and he runs away yelping. Is that a Brothers Grimm story? I have no idea. I think they're all kind of I just of think across disturbing. the board, the old-timey stories were not 
censored like, for children. Even Pinocchio, I think, was like kind of scary. He was like eating people or something or wanted their flesh oh. or something. Oh, God. And that was actually in A Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Oh. He was like, I want to eat your flesh or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. gross. Yeah. Okay. True True to the original tale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just always remember, was it, it wasn't SNL maybe when they would have the cartoon or I don't know if it's SNL or the Cartoon Network. The and, ambiguously gay duo. Yeah. Um, and they had Madonna or, oh, it was Sharon Stone and she flashes her beaver to Pinocchio or something like her that. Beaver. One of them. One of them. And then Pinocchio's just like humping her leg or something. And I just like, that's now how I think of Pinocchio. Wow. Um, and I think his nose grows and it's just like, God disgusting uh-huh <laughs> can you just not can you, just you take a break just not and storyboard <laughs> pervert storyboarders yeah but anyway yeah you go ahead so the last one i have was um another one i remember where spongebob is fighting his way to the top of a building on i think it's the the episode's called like karate island or something hmm. and in one of the rooms in the building that he's fighting his way to the top of, there is a character called the Tickler. And he has a very strong French accent <laughs> and very French clothing. So he's the French Tickler, <laughs> which is another word for a ribbed condom. Oh, I thought it was a dildo for some reason or a vibrator. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I Either thought that way. too. Oh, but... so it's definitely, okay. Yep. Oh my gosh, not subtle at all. No. Not even Then again, a that is bit. the kind of thing that would go over my head. And the thing I have is, those moments. <laughs> is that he's in a room, just him. So it's like, there's no, there's no like, um, we're sneaking this in. This is like, he, he is. He's front and center. He's in the spotlight. <laughs> is there interaction with the other characters? Yeah, I think oh. Sandy beats him up or something. Okay. Yeah. I almost said the beaver beats up the French tickler, but she's a squirrel. Mm -hmm. So never mind. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sandy the beaver. Or the French tickler beats up the beaver. <laughs> that's Let's pretty just funny. Stop. Okay. Okay. So that's, I think that's all I have. The oh, only other okay. note I had was about um, the one of the creators of Ren and Stimpy. Uh huh. And just how he was a piece of shit. It's not really about animations oh being raunchy but why was he a piece of shit what did he do he i guess was um uh sexually abusive or mm. um sexual misconduct toward uh young female interns mm. on the show mm. and he was just kind of a piece of shit i don't mm. know if he's still alive mm. but yeah a few women came out in like the 2000s mm -hmm. about it when they were quite young i'm sure that happened a lot and you know definitely they were underage the movement it was not really yeah a thing that came out or was prosecuted or just brought to light um but it's, it's just like... interesting when you when it, <clears throat> something like that happens on like a kid's show mm -hmm. well i just think of uh is it john lassiter Oh, yeah. Who I think is like that, where more and more were coming out. I don't know if they removed him from projects. Um, Which but... is so strange because it's like Disney, Pixar. Yeah, but, you know, Disney has kids films. No, I know. Yeah. I know it's not really anything new. It's just kind of strange because, like, you're supposed to be in this, you know, light-hearted nice friendly kind yeah. of business and you're just like the ultimate piece of shit mm -hmm. uh he left i think this was in 2018 it was saying he would he'll be leaving the walt disney company following a sexual harassment scandal um he also i think was uh accused of stealing people's work which i'm sure like you've talked about with artists uh happens a lot i don't know if he's even an artist Hmm. He stole people's work, though? Uh, yeah, I think there were allegations or maybe, yeah, of taking credit or not giving credit 
um i don't know i just i read more about I it at the time that. but i'm sure it's just so easy it was it's my just idea. right there i don't know I, I think there are a lot of people sure a lot of temptation that do that. Mm-hmm. they you know they probably get interns that do that are trying to prove themselves mm-hmm. and they do awesome work and then it's like the big top dog is like oh i did this mm-hmm. it's like fuck you buddy mm-hmm. fuck you mm-hmm. and then on top of it he's fucking abusing women mm-hmm. just stick them in the ground <laughs> we know that's your <laughs> <laughs> motto <laughs> Um, all right. Well, to bring it back around to the lighthearted um, stuff of inappropriateness in cartoons. So I have a couple more. I never watched Rocco's Modern Life either, but this one came up and it's a funny little clip. Did you ever watch that show? I never did. Okay. I don't know why I thought uh, it would be. The only time I ever watched cartoons as a young child was <clears throat> at my what my deal is. <clears throat> at my grandparents' house because no. they had cable or dish uh-huh. and my parents didn't really have cable you had like seven channels we had yeah we had a few channels and they were just like you know channel two four five (laughs) seven nine twelve twenty two and wow you clearly loved them and memorized them i memorized (laughs) them because those were the only channels we had until i was like 17 yeah and then it's like great now i'm ready to move out and you guys get all the good stuff but it was a good thing i think because yeah. otherwise i would have been glued to the tv all the time totally I, I came home one day and my mom had like gotten rid of the cable because we had it for a minute but i was fucking glued to it yeah it was nickelodeon all the time and mm-hmm. and she i mean i was freaking devastated and so angry but of course How on reflection you? uh you know i mean i had my saturday morning cartoons i mean you know, the only thing I didn't like on Nickelodeon was the black and white old shit they would play at night, Nick at night. Oh, God. I still hate it. Cosby Show? Donna. No. It was they a black the, and white shit. It was They my also played sons, the Cosby Show at on Donna Nick at Reed, night. Leave it to Beaver. Fucking hated that shit. The only one that was okay was the talking horse, Mr. Ed. You know. Anyway, um, so Rocco's. That was earlier than we had it. Oh. Well, you're lucky. Consider yourself lucky, son. <laughs> Hmm. um <laughs> excuse me i don't even know what rocco is but he... rocco's like a kangaroo or something is he i don't know he's so, australian i just like he his looks little like shirt a kangaroo. he looks like a snazzy dresser he's um picking uh orange or reddish berries out of a bush and eating them and he tries to pick one and it kind of squeezes and like goes honk and you hear like this um kind of growling or like yiping in the bush and then this big purple bear i think stands up <laughs> and roars and then runs away yelping did he just and the his bear nipple? and the berry disappears i think it was his testicle and he runs away whimpering <laughs> what yeah, you are want, you kidding do you want me? me to just show it to you yes i think um are we gonna be able to play it or are we gonna have to cut that i mean you could just uh, wait, play it without can't. sound um yeah <laughs> wait can you back it up hold oh on gosh. <laughs> or it's his penis and, uh, and the bear he's grabbing yeah so the bear is running away g- yeah. grabbing his crotch <laughs> wow i'll put a link in the description because it's all it's so much good and then there's some more that, that why I does don't... that purple bear have an orange penis or whatever that and why is. does it look like all the other berries or has he just been plucking that? Yeah, I don't think so. But maybe it's he, funny. maybe the bear was planning on somebody coming over and grabbing him, uh, but he, just Rocco just grabbed him a little too hard. He was a little rough. Because <laughs> <laughs> why would you just sit in the bush with your penis sticking right? out to like? That's true. Because wow. people do do that. He's yeah. not a people. He's a bear. He's a purple bear. I'm just saying. That's so weird. There's perverts in the animal world as well. I mean, I know we're animals, but anyway um wow Didn't so know about that one the last one which you probably have seen because it's gumball the amazing world of gumball i love that show it's and so it's good. an earlier season season three mm-hmm. episode 20 i forget what it's called i wrote it down i thought um so gumball is i don't remember this one but i do not have your memory for cartoons um and so he's on some kind of adventure or something and this dragon thing is carrying him and he's like you're too heavy and he's like oh man and he drops him so gumball drops into the banana house who are Mm -hmm. the banana people um 
So there's like so many good moments in just this one little scene. So he drops into the first room where I think it's the mom and she has this funny look on her face. So she's either like having a premonition or she's a bit off, but like kind of a clairvoyant savant or something. And she's painting a portrait of Gumball in the bathroom bursting in on the dad. So then Gumball runs into the next room and the dad's in the bath and he (laughs) screams like a girl like this high pitched scream and then he plops his mustache on and then screams like a man and gumball like runs out of the room and then gumball so gumball is a cat right yeah if you, anyway, it's really good but like there's a mix of like real and cartoon or animated there's a stuff. whole bunch of different styles there's yeah. like 3d there's yeah you know it's paper really funny looking. and his best friend slash foster brother is darwin the fish darwin mm-hmm. darwin right? yeah. yeah with legs he's a pet he's orange but he's, he's like a, his, they treat him like his brother. They do, but he was like, I think he started out as a pet that like became a mm-hmm. weird humanoid fish uh-huh. boy. Yeah. So they go to school together and stuff. So anyway, there's all these other weird characters. So Banana Joe, I had to look up his name, is the kid. So then he bursts in on Banana Joe and you get a flash of Banana Joe facing his computer and to the right, which I didn't notice at first until I read in the text, like if you look, there's like a box of tissue and then it shows Banana Joe <laughs> and he turns around because at first he's like watching this, the, the computer screen and he's like smiling. And then he turns around to face Gumball and you see the screen and it's like an orange or a tangerine being slowly peeled, like opened. And it's like porn. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they did a thing like that on Spongebob too, where, he, oh, where no. Spongebob is sitting in his chair uh-huh. and... um. There's like music playing like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so look over here, the yeah. tissue. But that's not, that definitely is not, but they're he's, not trying to be discreet about that yeah. for sure. And he's in the dark and it's just this like seedy little desk lamp on mm-hmm. and he's clearly enjoyed himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so good. That is really funny. Yeah. But there's so. one with SpongeBob that, so there's like, music going like oh like benny hill okay it is kind of weirdly benny hill like but he's like sitting up in his chair and like scooting toward the screen like he's really getting into it and it's just like a an anemone kind of bouncing around left and right and gary squishes on in gary the snail uh-huh and spongebob's like gary and he turns the tv off hastily that's so funny yeah that's good stuff pretty special yeah i don't know that whole scene was like why am i getting an ad for a guy to come that gumball scene was beautiful i swear this guy was looking at a microscope between a woman's i don't need to see that what oh my god how would that even work i don't know but make it go like a telescope uh so anyway um yeah good stuff um yeah so there's a lot um Okay, I feel like there's one more I could talk about, um, which is the Rugrats. And um, let me just check. We're on time. Um, So I think that the family goes to visit um, Grandpa or they they go to the town he lives and and then Grandpa's going to watch the kids. um, Chucky and what, what was the main little boy's name? Tommy? Yes. So the parents go out to a party and then grandpa's like, oh, we're going to have fun tonight. I got these movies you like, which is like Reptar. Is it Reptar? Reptar? Reptar. Like Reptilian? Yeah, sure. It's like... I never really liked Rugrats. I didn't like the animation style. because it was about babies. Yeah, maybe. Like, I never... Like, why would I want to watch a show about babies? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. It was fine. Well, and then, like, I hated Angelica. I wasn't into the animation style. I think that's what. Well, you were supposed to hate Angelica. She was a jerk. She was like a bully. But it was just like the whole. Her. She was extra obnoxious. And then just the animation. I know it wasn't sloppy, but, like, the look was kind of sloppy. And I just. It's why I I wasn't into King of the Hill. And then as soon as I put it on, I was like, this show's amazing. Oh, yeah, because the writing was good. But But the the animation animation is very underwhelming. Man. Um, yeah. But now I don't even think about the animation. It adds to the funniness sometimes of the, like the stupid characters. Um, but 
uh, so grandpa says, oh, you know, Reptar and Reptar returns or something like that. And he goes, and my personal favorite, Lonely Space Vixens. I wrote victims. Lonely Space Vixens. But that's for after you go to bed. It's oh, my like... goodness, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, and he's just this unattractive, badly drawn. Grandpa. Pervy old grandpa. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So much perversion mm-hmm. in these uh, children's shows. Yeah. Who knew? Mm-hmm. I feel like we could have a part two. Possibly. We could probably have a part ten of this. Probably. Yeah. So yeah. Any, that's that's all I got. You got any other thoughts about pervy uh, children stuff? No. No. Don't really want to go there. What? Don't really want to think about this any more than you have to. <clears throat> no, I just can't think of any other. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> can't think of any other ones. Mm-hmm. Because those are just ones that I've seen. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't remember, of, except for Pee Wee's Playhouse. But I couldn't even remember those moments because I didn't get them at the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, cool. Very now cool. that we've come to a stuttering stop. <laughs> uh-huh. Now that we're out of material. <laughs> well, I have more, but it's all... It's mostly Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> There's a Jimmy Smith's episode. Jimmy oh. Smith's from... Was he in Law and Order or what was it? NYPD Blue, one of those? I don't know what you're talking about. Jimmy Smits? Let me look him up. Well, in Pee Wee's Playhouse came back on uh, Adult Swim when mm-hmm. it came back, which, I mean, I kind of hate Adult Swim. Why is that? Just because they they just have whatever, like, quirky, weird thing, mm. you know, they don't, I don't know. It's like the Tim and Eric Awesome Show. Mm. It's just kind of like, if it's weird, it's funny. But that's not really true. What's the weird dog one? That is that a Adult Swim? The the weird fucking cannibal dog, or he's like a really cannibal. I dog. I watched like an episode of it on Hulu, and I wonder if that's Adult Swim. Just so out there and and horrible and kind of gory. I'm like, this isn't even funny. It just reminded me of Courage the Cowardly Dog, which I just thought was so weird. And my little cousins, well, when they were little, they loved it, and I just thought this is a fucking weird, disturbing show. Courage the Cowardly Dog was weird but yeah. i felt like very few funny moments so this is jimmy smith's and when he was much younger he i thought i mean he's an attractive man but he um he what the hell show was he on courtroom drama anyway i think mm. he was in sons of anarchy i think he played what's her name's um love interest the the mom later i, I didn't actually watch the whole show so he was in peewee's playhouse so he was in very young you know super slim and tall um and of course miss yvonne i keep on i keep saying the y i think you're just supposed to pronounce it yvonne i've always had a hard time with that name oh yvonne yvonne miss yvonne um so he's fixing clonky i think is the robot and he's like oh where's my wrench and she goes is that a wrench in your pocket and he's like oh yep there it is so. I mean, that's kind of, that's, I think that's subtle enough. Except he has a tool belt and it's not on his tool belt. It's in his pocket. Oh. And she's just always like buxom and, oh, the other one, actually, that was the worst buxom? of. Does that buxom? mean like busty? Yeah. Well, you probably shouldn't have a busty person on a children's show She was always anyway. wearing like, not short dresses, but like very feminine and like puffy dresses, but like up top. Her boobs were always kind of out. Wow, that's... Yeah. I, I never watched Pee-wee's Playhouse. Oh, I'll have to I show think, you. I think that was a little bit before my time. It was, yeah. Uh, Miss Yvonne, let's see. Kind of reddish hair. Like, not... This one's not too bad, but, you know, she yeah. had her boobs-ish out a fair amount. So, she is... Oh, so they come into his playhouse and they see that there's like a, a a play like a carousel horse but like what what do you call them the ones you put quarter in and they just rock a rock uh, uh i don't know what do you, you call those a riding horse i don't know there's like a name but i can't think of it um and she's like oh look peewee so he hefts her up for and first of all it's kind of funny because and rude because he like pretends that it's like killing his back to just <laughs> lift her up onto the horse so she rides it and then it gets like faster and she's like oh 
and she's I think she's riding like side saddle but and her hair is increasingly getting like fried and disheveled Mm -hmm. and then she's like done and her hair is just like a mess Mm -hmm. and she and she's like oh and he's like are you okay and she gets off and she's like thank you peewee and then she pats the horse and she goes and thank you big fella and then like saunters away and you're just so weird you're just waiting for her to puff on a cigarette because i don't know it was just like yeah very not was, subtle who the fuck was writing that show i feel like paul rubens i mean he it was like his character i i think it was like a stand-up thing before and then not that wanking off in a theater is necessarily not a common thing for people to do but, but didn't he wasn't he supposedly wanking off in like a porno theater i think so which is like what is the purpose of a porno theater if people aren't going to be doing that Mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know the rules behind it i mean it's kind of like strip clubs like do you want to go into a public place and watch a sex thing and get off like why do they exist i think it's so people people are doing i think because there's people who like to do it in public and get off on that and i just feel like So you have this guy who's dressed like this. And I think probably they've done like documentaries about it or analyzed it. But like there's there's like this very repressed something. I mean, he's kind of has like a gay look, but it's kind of like, I don't know, just obviously very sexualized Mm. with some of the characters. And um, yeah, so there's (laughs) and I feel like he developed the character. So he's probably has a big hand in the writing of it yeah yeah fun stuff i'm glad i think if i had been watching that i feel like my parents might have turned it off and been like okay enough of that well well, it's time to go outside oh it's over (laughs) technical difficulties anything yeah but you know good fond family memories watching that with my parents Mm. nice cool i'm glad that it went over my head because i remember as a kid like if we'd be watching something and there'd be like a love scene it was so horrible even as a young it was like if i could tell that a scene was coming i would make an excuse to leave the room (laughs) so that it wasn't obvious like i'm gonna go cook the popcorn no don't pause it you know i'd go to the bathroom because it was like oh my fucking god it was the worst thing ever i don't well even as an adult it's like they're kind of they're kind of um, a lot of the time feel very forced in mm. and just like long. Mm. And it's like, I don't need to be. Yeah. You know, I thought I don't would... need to be subjected to Harrison Ford's chest hair for 10 million <laughs> years. Funny. That wasn't even that long comparatively. I know, but it kind of feels like it. And then it's, you know, you have like the female character like licking his chest. And it's like, you just like thinking of the hair in her mouth it's like oh my gosh i'm trying to eat here yeah we were watching what lies beneath which is uh what did i say it was 2003 or 2000 i thought it has aged really well i really love it because i, I it was like a great movie did you yeah because you were kind of well, you're very critical anyway but and i think I... you get stressed so then you're more critical like why are you doing that <laughs> jump scares but i'm I not really, a fan of jump scares i really like to show brandon those kind of things because he's not really phased by the horror stuff and i am but he is phased by the jump scare phantom ghosty kind of stuff because you can get jump scared by anything yeah. like i said before yeah. i mean a good a well-timed fart can scare <laughs> a person so like it's just kind of easy and cheap in my opinion jump scares are a little bit i mean i'm not saying that movie was cheap because there were some really good i feel like you're just resentful because there were some really good camera angles (laughs) yeah and timing yeah there were definitely like dumb plot holes and your typical like why would you stay in the house you'd run out immediately but yeah but for the most part i thought the cinematography was really good it was really well done and just i like a good ghost story and you kind of like i i think if i was at this age and i was seeing it for the first time i would have predicted immediately what had happened because you see enough and you know what's going to happen but um but when i originally saw it you know 15 whatever years ago 20 years ago i i thought it was really good and so anyway there's like one ish love scene there are a couple and i think yeah but the one where he's I almost said chestless. He's without his chest. He's, He's without, without a shirt. His shirt in the and other I think one you were too. trying to eat your salad that you just made this concocted this delicious salad and you were like, oh I was just I don't like, need to see his furry chest. I just 
<laughs> I mean, hair is yeah. like dirty and kind of gross. Body hair, body hair just kind of grosses me out, and I don't need to be seeing like a big mm. puff of chest hair. As while you're about I'm, to bite into your meaty salad, eat. it's like I'm trying to eat here. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> Are you about ready to wrap it up? I think so. Banana Boy. I don't know why I'm going to call you Banana Boy now. Oh, his name's Banana Joe. Right? Banana Joe? Banana Let's Boy. Let's watch some Gumball now. What do you think about that? Let's watch some Gumball, Banana Joe, watching porn. Fruit porn. Okay. Just do. kidding. All right, kids. All go right. watch these. Oh, we'll put links in the description so you can see all the grody old man um, or women stuff that they put in these shows. All right okay all right are you ready yeah okay <laughs> i am ready <laughs> okay thanks guys see you next time bye bye bye